Hi guys, welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. So, Happy New Year. I know that we've all been holding GameStop shares for a very long time, and I'm going to give you some insight, okay? Now, as you hold a stock, I don't care how long you've been holding it, for years and years and years and years, and there's been some ups, there's been some downs, and you've been through some tough times, I'm going to tell you right now, 2024 is going to be the greatest year to hold GameStop shares so far. Now, there's going to be greater years to come, but 2024 is your year. I'm letting you know this now because they're going to show a profit, a trailing 12 profit, an annual profit, zero cash burn, and the message is going to be correct. You know, Wall Street has changed their narrative. If you guys talk to the, the meltdowners like I do, they're always coming into the chat and they're always telling you things like GameStop's a terrible investment. GameStop's trash. They're never going to make a profit. It's going digital. The whole world's going digital. The physical media is dead. And they'll come out with everything. And they'll tell you they, ne they have a cash burn. They burn all this cash. And then you go and show them. You go, yeah, GameStop uh, didn't have a cash burn. The trailing 12. So what do you say to that? Uh, they say nothing. Then it's, oh, well, top line revenue is down. Yeah, top line revenue did come down $300 million, but gross profits went up $30 million. So what are we talking about? Gross profits increased over the last eight quarters instead of decreased? Yeah, I know. Charlene 12 is positive. They do show a profit. This is like all the things that people don't want to talk about, right? But I want to tell you guys why I talk about it because you might go through all the rough times, but right now it comes smooth sailing, guys. We have one month left in January, one month left for this quarter for GameStop to kill it, quarter four. So for me, I'm going all out. I'm going to be at the store. I'm going to be shopping. I'm going to be talking. I'm going to recommend it to anyone I see. It's GameStop all month long for January. We have 30 more days to go, and I want to kill it, right? I want to put in as much effort as I can into it. But beyond that, you know, I always revisit the story. So whenever we're doing Connect the Dots, you guys know this series. There's part 53 already. We'll call this part 54 right now, but it's about GameStop. Because if you don't know what's happened to this company, we can always talk about Ryan Cohen, okay? We can all get together and go, Ryan Cohen, Larry Chang, Alan Addle, board of directors, everyone involved, all the transition that's happened over, well, you know, Jenna Owens leaving, Michael Cubio leaving, Matthew Furlong leaving, everyone that's had to leave, DJ, right? She left, the CFO, everybody's gone. And then who's still standing? Well, you, the shareholder, and of course, Ryan Cohen, you know, the man who puts his money where his mouth is. But check this out, guys. The part that no one's telling you, the part that we've been right about, this is why I feel so good about Connect the Dots and you becoming a better investor by watching that whole series. Because we tell you, when they plant people on boards, private equity, I want to explain this very clearly. When private equity plants people onto the board of directors for any company, just know the fix is in. This is when the lights go up and all the short sellers come in and they pounce into a stock. So it happens this way. And I tell you, yeah, hey, that person got hired. Yep, I know who they are. I know where they come from. And people say, no, there's no way. You can't believe that. I said, oh, you don't think so? Watch this, guys. Okay? Connect the dots, part 54. What the hell? Let's do it. So GameStop, this is right before Ryan Cohen comes in. Now, I tell you, GameStop's been killing itself, i.e. mass amount of debt, extending themselves, too many, the footprint's too big, and they did it because they were profitable. They were making money hand over fist, but they stretched themselves so far as to open up 7,500 stores, and then they've shrunk down right now because of Ryan. He's doing it the right way, but check this out, Okay. So we all know that George Sherman got hired, right? George Sherman gets hired. He's 50-something years old. He retires, guys. He walks away with a, with a parachute, a golden parachute. And kudos to him. He hasn't sold a single share. All right? He's walked away with 100-something million dollars at the time they were worth. But I think even he knows the transition to GameStop is real after Ryan comes in, right? So when you look at this, guys, and he's hanging on to his shares, they hired a couple of people. They hired James Bell. And people are looking at James Bell. And I'm going to tell you, He's, um, it's not woke, it's wook, wook holdings or uh, walk, walk holdings. I'm so sorry. I'm not good with this stuff. So walk holdings company, and they're the parent company of PF chains. But if people know that's all private equity, they bought them out. There was center view partners, other companies involved here. RLH is the, is a hotel, but these guys come from the private equity partnerships. So then you have the next guy, Chris Homester. At 50 years old, he comes in, and where does he come from? The tile shop. Don't worry, I got you covered. 
And then Frank Hamlin, 50 years old, he comes in and he's coming from 25 years experience. So we'll go to Frank Hamlin first. So when you guys go look at Frank Hamlin, he's the one who gets hired. This is, these are all the guys that Ryan Cohen kicked out. Pay attention. Frank Hamlin, he comes over from the men's warehouse, Josh A. Bank. And when you know he's a CMO at Tailored Brands, remember, Sue Gove. You guys remember this whole connection between private equity, Apollo, the whole field. Frank Hamlin's no different. He was on the board of directors at Tuesday morning. Yes, they went bankrupt. They set it up this way. They were bringing in people to destroy GameStop, guys. And this was one of them, in my mind, from what I can see. Uh, they've never you know, managed a successful company. If you don't know Tailored Brands, you should. We've talked about it in the past. Go look at Connect the Dots part, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, somewhere in that range. Next person is Chris Homester. He worked for a company called The Tile Shop for four years right before he went over to GameStop. He was the CEO. He gave up CEO, president of the board, and, and a board member of the tile shop. He gave up every position possible to come over and be the EVP and the chief marketing officer, the merchandising officer. You don't think they're offering him some money? Just to give you an example who works over there at the tile shop, you have an individual like this young lady. She's from the University of Penn, the Wharton School. You know, that's, that's always a dead giveaway. Senior director of Starwood Hotels and Resorts. They had additional people on the board of directors. I want to say this guy right here was private equity. Peter over here, um, Boston Consulting Group, right here, director and vice president of Boston Consulting Group. Like, you got to know who's over here, guys, at these, at these shops. And these are all people that they set up. Now, who's the parent company of the board of directors for the tire, the tile shop? Remember, who, who got them there? It's right here. J.W. Childs and Associates. If you don't know who that is, he's partners with Thomas H. Lee and Partners. Right. So you knew that everyone was there to destroy the company from within. And I looked at all the new hires that they brought in. Guys, it was set up. It was set up. So, yeah, we know. We know it was set up. You had other people on the board, like I believe Bill Simon that we got at, we got him out. He was from KKR. And you had these all these cats, private equity guys. They're ready to drive the company on down to the ground. Hey, those were the tough years. Those were the hard years. And for a lot of you guys that came into the stock right now in these last two years, last three years, and you're just looking at the ebb and flow of the markets and the economy, and it's like trying, it's daunting. I know, it. you get tired. People are telling you about opportunity cost and what you lost of what you could have bought and the profits you missed on certain investments. Yeah, well, go look at AMC right now. It's down 90%. It has, it's the biggest loser in the whole Russell 1K. Look at them, guys. Down 85% over the last year, 99% since... That, that run up that was unbelievable, right? I called it pump and dump. And you see what, what Adam Aaron is and who he is. Then you go look at Mullen Automotive. If you would have bought $10,000 of automotive of Mullen Automotive stock in February of last year, it would now be worth $14. You would go from $10,000 to $14, and you have people making videos and articles and telling you, Mullen Automotive is the investment. They secured some contracts or they delivered 50 vehicles or shut up. You took 10 grand and turned it into $14. I can't do it. We look at Bed Bath and Gone. Bed Bath and Beyond has zero shares. Whenever somebody tells you what's your position, this is how many how many shares I have. No, they're gone forever. They're never coming back. The grifters that are out there, if you guys didn't see them, 2024, the first tweets of this year from the PPC's crew and everyone else out there, what do they type out, guys? GameStop's always been the play. We believe in Ryan Cohen. He's the man. Uh, we, we align everything with Ryan Cohen and GameStop. Uh, then why didn't you buy GameStop? And why aren't you making GameStop videos? Why are you only doing tweets? Where's the update video? Where's the live stream? Where, what, what are we doing? There's been one company and one stock that I've been following for three years and that I love and that I respect and that I understand and I enjoy it. And I'm going to keep enjoying it because all those bad times, all those hard times, doesn't matter. 2024 is it. They set us up for failure. They try to pounce. They try to destroy us. GameStop, the company, and you can't. Ryan Cohen, to you, sir. Cheers. We got this. Well, at least I do. I'm going to keep buying shares this year because I know it's coming. Profits, profits, profits. 
Thank you guys so much. Have a good night on it. But I promise you guys, GameStop, they beat private equity. And they're going to keep doing it. I'll see you around, millionaires. Peace.